Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So from last time to now, I have taken the pine trees outside that I had already built and painted them. I'm still having difficulty finding the uh, camouflage paints that I used to use. But uh, I found this color, which is a walnut, a, a satin, uh, like a two-in-one uh, aerosol, a primer, and uh, paint. And it looks pretty good. The, the colors are nice, and again, kind of a deep dark, and then the uh, foliage that goes on will lighten it up. So I'll be working with that later in this video. But uh, like I talked about in the previous video, I'm going to spend some time on this scene. I uh, did go to Lowe's and I got the rest of my fasteners and I'm ready to go on this little area here. So what I'm going to do right now is I will just take uh, some pink foam board chunks, cut them to the size I need just to kind of fill in that gap. And then uh, I'm going to set the camera up and uh, we'll show some snippets as I progress through uh, making this scene. There will be a variety of different things going on in here. Basic ground cover, uh, putting in some plaster to make some rocks so I can carve, and then uh, the different steps in the uh, ground cover process that I do. So stay with me here. I uh, should go through quite a bit in uh, little snippets here. So I'm going to get started on this area by putting in sculpt mold over in here just to finish this off. I made up one batch of sculpt mold and I make it on the stiff side. I don't want it to be too runny. I want it to be able to be pressed into place and hold its shape. So I'm going to get this going here and it's real simple. I just kind of put it in, squish it in, form it just around the areas where I've got the uh, fascia sort of clean it off the fascia. Get it right up to the seam without going into the seam. So I've still got a fair amount left. What I will do is I will build this area up. So that this is gonna be a little bit more pronounced, sort of a cliff once we get to the uh, plaster phase. Still got a little bit more, I'll add right in here, kind of build that up as a little bit of a cliff face as well. And just kind of press it in, work it to how you want it to be. It adheres well to other sculpt mold. like too is that if it's this dry and you get any crumblies down on the floor just let it dry a little bit more pry it off with this so there so and you can come back in and work it however you want to do it you know if you want to just leave sculpt mold on obviously you can do that too you can use your fingers you can use other tools like at this stage and carve it I just happen to like to put the skim coat on so I'll let this set a little bit and then uh, come back in with some plaster. So yeah, that looks good. Next step is adding plaster. So for this step, I just went and grabbed a used, uh, in this case, a tofu container, small one, you know, about a quart size. Uh, you can use anything. And then uh, plaster, uh, the stuff that I get at the uh, Home Depots. I'll show a picture of that in a minute here. Mix it up to a stiff consistency because you want it to be able to grab. So this is the easy part and the fun, messy part, putting this on and just spreading it out. So for vertical cliffs, I just put it on and I don't work it much. You know, if I'm doing horizontal strata, strata I'll kind of pull it horizontally. You kind of see, and I am kind of grabbing at the bottom so that I'm not having a huge mess coming down on my fascia, which if I do, yeah, I do. Uh, you can kind of see, yeah, I want it on reasonably thick. doesn't have to be thick everywhere because 
is you don't want it to run an excessive amount. There we go. And then we'll come over here and do this. There you go. And then we want to kind of join them a little bit. You know, when I do rock, a lot of the rock is actually going to be hidden. So when I'm done doing carving, you know, I've got a lot more rock showing than what really will be showing at the end when I get uh, everything in position. And that's because that's how it is in nature. You're gonna have some rock poking through uh, your work uh, when you put ground cover on. And that's how it should be. So, okay, and then we'll just kind of rough up some of these flat surfaces. top and just sort of let it ooze down. And you don't have to use all when you're working in areas. You, know, you can let it dry. Like right now I'll just let this dry and it'll be easy to take out. So Gonna let this dry for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back in and then we'll uh, do some carving. All right, it has literally been about 90 seconds since the last clip. You want it to set, but you don't want it to necessarily harden completely, otherwise it makes it difficult to uh, do the cut. So I'm just using a real small putty knife for this. This strata here is easy because you can see up at the top it's horizontal, so I'm gonna just continue that. I'm gonna just pick a spot to start. So I'm just going to start over in here and I'll do my first cut and I'll pull it completely across. You know, we'll just kind of see and when I get stuff like that I'll just put it back on the scenery and then uh, I'll establish more lines. Again, horizontal across and at this point you don't care about the nubblies. Nubblies are okay. You get into here and just start to and you can dig it deep into this because you want different textures to kind of highlight and come out. It might look like you're wasting plaster, uh, and kinda, but it's not that big of a deal. So we'll go here, and you can see we're doing everything. Make sure some of these have continuity across. Kind of run up on the top where pieces fall out, don't care. <laughs> you hear me say that a lot. That's the fun of the modeling piece that we're doing. Okay, so there, it's essentially carved. And what I will kind of do is just run this over a little bit, kind of flatten out some of the spots, kind of knock off a little bit of the crumblies Stuff that gets on the floor, again, just let it sit there because it will harden. And if you want, you know, you can always kind of press this stuff down here on. That's no big deal. Okay. Now from this part, we will let it sit for a few minutes before coming back in with the wire brush. You do want it to firm up pretty good. You want the nub leaves to dry. That way the wire brush takes it off. And then uh, once that part is done, you know what, that's ready for the, the stain. Uh, so we'll be able to do that fairly quick too. All right, probably four or five minutes has elapsed. So for the wire brush, I'm using this little guy. This is actually a suede brush. It's my dad's from long ago. So it's fairly soft. It's not real aggressive bristles, but it's enough to do what I want to do here. So following the strata, I'm just knocking off the loose stuff. This also gives the uh, plaster a bit more of a texture uh, because it's giving it some of the fine lines that are in it. Yeah, I'm just going to let this stuff hit the floor because I'll sweep it up when I'm done. 
kind of get in to work some of the nooks and crannies. This part is probably the one where you've got to be most conscious of how hard your plaster is. Um, you'll see the brush is starting to load a little bit. I'll be able to clean this off and I do that every time I use it. If you do it too soon and the plaster is too wet, loads the brush, you got a mess. You do it too late, the plaster is hard, you get the nubblies off, but you're not able to give it the texture that goes along with it. And you know what? That's it, good enough. So I will do a little more right here. That's still kind of a blib, there we go. There. Now, all I'll do is I will let that completely dry. I will come back in with a brush and just sort of brush the loose nubblies and clean up the floor. <laughs> and then I'm ready to put the uh, stains on it. So that'll be the next piece. All right, ready to start putting the uh, stains on it. So I'm using my three barathane colors and I'll show the cans here after a bit. Uh, what I just start to do is I just start to uh, mix and blend. I don't want to load the brush too much, but just kind of put it on. And the colors that you choose and where you choose to put them, entirely up to you. Uh, I'm just kind of going to put uh, sort of a brownish beige on this area, uh, just kind of for ground cover. Kind of bring it up, do it kind of neat uh, when I get along the uh, fascia. Even though I'm going to paint it, I don't want it to soak it too badly. So we'll just kind of do that. And I load the brush reasonably well. Get right up on the edge. And the nice thing is, is it does soak in pretty well so that you've got, uh, you know, color that'll penetrate a little bit. So a few little nicks, bumps here and there, no big deal. Now I'm going to change over into a different color for the areas that really have the, the rock highlighted. And again, I'm just going to kind of put it on. Let gravity do its work let it sort of soak in you know i don't care if it makes runs and then i'm going to use a little bit of the ebony and i mean just a little bit here and there just to kind of highlight some areas and i'll go into some different colors and i'll get some grays browns some muddy looking rock which is absolutely good kind of work the bristles into it again if you get little nubblies coming off no big deal you know, nubblies easily clean them up so it's looking pretty good I like how the color is looking here seen how I do this in other videos is once I get all of the color on I'm just gonna let it soak for a few minutes then I will come back in and I will use paper towels and blot it off so the colors that you see here will not necessarily be the final that it's gonna look have that nice blended appearance to it. Okay. There we are. So this part, don't need to let it sit very long. Uh, I will give it uh, about 30 seconds, about the time that it takes me to get a wad of paper towels. I'll be ready to start. All right, it's been just a little bit. I've been able to put my uh, caps on my stains grabbed a wad of paper towels. Now we just come in and sort of blot on top. 
and that's just how I do it, just kind of get the excess off. And then on the, the rock faces, notice the changes already where some of it highlights, some of it will stand out. Some of it will drop off, but <laughs> that's okay. It's still got stain in it, so I'm good. I'm happy with that. Then I'll just kind of come in, press on it, not too hard, just to kind of make sure that the excess is gone. That's it. That's all there is to it. Got a uh, nice looking rock face matches up well with us up there you'll notice uh, perspective so we're looking at this almost straight on so it does look you know, very horizontal now you're looking at it up here and it looks like it's curved but it's not again you look at it straight on horizontal so perspective what I will do now is I'll just let this sit Gonna let that dry for a couple of hours. I got other things to do this afternoon. Then I can come back in and I can start doing some scenery work on it. Uh, but uh, you know what? That's it. Short and sweet on the process that I use and it gives good results. You know, as I was editing this, I see that it's already over 16 minutes just for uh, this part. So I'm gonna make this a two-parter. So this covers the basic for the uh, hard shell scenery. Oh, this is drying a little bit, looks pretty good, matches up well with the other side, which is at about the same geologic level for rock. So I'm going to make another one uh, that's just going to show the ground cover and how I finish off the scene, uh, showing the actual steps and me applying uh, materials. So that's going to be in the next video. So uh, a two-parter here. So anyway, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.